Guys, this is Matt from the Man Cave. Guys, this is Matt from the Man Cave with your daily devotion for June the 6th. Hey, you probably didn't know Matt was ninja. I'm not. I'm just fooling around today in the sun. <laughs> you, you may be sitting there in your lazy boy with your clicker and your Coca-Cola eating pizza. I'm out here in 110 degree weather sweating to death. Guys, today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 6. We're looking at one verse, verse 24. And here's what it says. It says, men, men in the man cave. This is God screaming with a megaphone to all the men in the man cave. Keep from the immoral woman. What is it talking about? Friends, it's talking about a woman that's wanting to have sex that could be married, who's just promiscuous, okay? She's out there, she's available, she's throwing herself at you. Jesus said these words, okay? If a man looketh on a woman with lust in his heart, and you know what I'm talking about, as you look at her and you're just kind of going up and down, or okay, and you're looking all of her features and how God's blessed her as a beautiful woman. If you look at her and there's lust within your mind and it goes down to your heart and you start imagining things, here's the thing. You have committed adultery with her already. If we go to the very next verse, God warns us in the man cave. He says, don't lust. I mean, he's just plainly saying in verse 25, do not lust. What do you need to do? You need to bounce your eyes. You just don't want to do that. Verse 25, listen to God's word. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. Watch this. I love verse 26, okay? It says this, okay? For the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread. He's not calling her a prostitute, but he's giving men in the man cave an example. What it's saying is this. You're likened unto a loaf Meaning of bread. This, all that prostitute, she may say with her smooth, eloquent talk how handsome you are. You're kidding. You work there? Man, you're really built. Oh, you're kidding. You drive that? Oh, and no matter who it is, she just spins the tail a little bit, okay? Meaning all she sees with you is a dollar sign, but you're listening to what you she's saying. You're allowing her to build up your ego, your pride, all these different things. But God says no. He says don't lust after her. Don't go there. Don't get into the imaginations. Men, don't be watching pornography because here's the thing. You're so much more likely to falter here in this area when you're looking at that trap. Trash, trash is what it is, okay, on the internet. That's not all it says. Listen very carefully because God has put warnings out for you and I. And I'm going somewhere with this. Stick with me, man. It says, for the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread, and the adulteress preys upon your very life. See, what it's talking about is a woman that's available, that's a prostitute, okay? It's comparing you, a man in the man cave, to a loaf of bread. Oh, give me a break. Nobody better be talking about you as you're just a loaf of bread. You're a commodity. I can have him whenever I want to. He's easy, okay? I can manipulate him. I can deceive him. I can get every last dollar out of his wallet because he's weak. Is that you? Well, it says this, that the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread, meaning there's really nothing left of you after you're engaging in this type of lifestyle. But it goes on, okay? So for the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread, but the adulteress preys upon your very life, meaning you're having sex with another man's wife. She's an adulteress, meaning she's married, okay? God is so down on this, okay? How did you get to this point? I mean, how did you get to this point where you're engaging in sex with a prostitute or lusting, or, and you're even considering sleeping with another man's life up here? in your imaginations, okay? Job said in Job 31.1, I have made a covenant with my eyes, okay? I mean, I made, I made a promise to my eyes. I'm not gonna look at this stuff over here. Hey, let me tell you a story. Yesterday, we went to the pool, the family, okay? And I tell you what, it was a great time. A huge pool, water slides. Oh, we were just having a ball. We had all the drinks. We brought the biggest cooler you could bring, and we are just filled with chicken sandwiches and chips and cookies, all the man cave treats, okay? Listen, all the man cave treats. If I could have snuck a barbecue in there and, and put a two-inch fatty steak on there, I would have, but they wouldn't allow it. And you're like, well, Matt, you're in the man cave. You should have done it anyway. No, I follow the rules, man cave rule. Hey, listen very carefully, okay? So I'm there. What is all before me throughout the day? Women, beautiful women, what are they wearing? Bikinis, bathing suits, okay? Some are appropriately dressed, some are not appropriately dressed. While I'm out there and I'm with the family, I'm with the wife, kids are going down the slide. There's women everywhere, okay? There's no way to get around it. 
But here's the thing, where are these eyes looking? Yeah, here's the thing, I'm watching my kids. Do I have to continue to stare at a beautiful woman, at her tail, at her body, at her breast? No, the Bible says don't do it, okay? And, and after, as we do that, men, watch this. As we do that, we start imagining different things and then we, we find something else over here and over here, okay? And here's the thing, God has blessed us with a wife or we're praying for God to bless us with a wife. We're asking a favor of God. God, would you bless me with a wife? But we're not behaving. Friends, God is saying this. If you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you're committing adultery with her. He gives a warning. The very next verse asks you and I a question. And I love when God asks me a question. And here's the thing. Let's answer him truthfully. You want to? Being men in the man cave, being men of integrity. Okay, he says this. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Meaning this, let's say you're sitting in your favorite chair at the house, okay? Every man has one, okay? And it's your chair. No one's really allowed in it. Sometimes the dog gets in your chair, but that's just because he has special privilege. God wants you to do this. He wants you to get the old Weber barbecue going, dump the king's fruit in there, let that go for about 40 minutes till the coals are really, really, really hot. Then he wants you to get that barbecue and pour it into your lap and just sit there with the hot coals right here in your lap. Here's God's question to you men in the man cave. Can you put coals on your groin and not have a problem? God's saying this, I have a huge problem when you're lusting after someone's future wife. Coals in my lap, I don't know about you. I'm like, hey God, I think I'll pass on that and I'll watch my eyes. I'll make a covenant with my eyes not to look on a maiden, not to look on someone else's future wife, not to look at some guy's daughter because that's what you're looking at guys, okay? You're looking at some guy's are. So many men falter in this area. It's either with power, money, or women. But God is going to compare. I love comparisons in the Bible too. Okay, first he's given us the comparison. He asks us a question. Can you take a bunch of hot coals, put them in your lap, and not be burned? You're going to be burned. And here's the thing. Depending on how long the coals sit there, how long you're engaged in that behavior is going to determine how badly you got hurt. That's why it's talking about coals, okay? It's, it's like hot potato. When I was a kid, we used to play hot potato. You know what I'm saying? They warmed up a potato. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. They warmed up a potato. They had it wrapped up in tin foil, and it was hot. And you're throwing the potato because it's hot. You can't hold it. But God's saying this. Hey, if I put hot coals in your lap, how long before you jump up and start doing ah! and jump into the pool or jump into the shower and put cold water on you? Very quickly, okay? The longer the coals sit there, the worse the bird is going to be. But he's going to compare. Now he's asked us a question, but now he can pairs the hot coals to something. Here's what it is. Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? And the answer again is no. We don't want to do that. We don't want to engage in that, okay? Here's, here's what he compares it to. So it is with he who sleeps with another man's wife. Okay, it's like you putting hot coals in your lap or walking on hot coals. You're gonna get burned, it's gonna hurt, and watch this, you're scarred. Listen very carefully, have you ever gotten burnt? Okay, I've been burned a couple times, and here thing, where I was burnt, I got a scar there. And there's consequences, and God is trying to tell you and me in the man cave the consequences, okay, of fornication and adultery, okay, of sleeping around, thinking, hey, no harm, no foul, no big deal, you know what I'm saying? It is a big deal to God because of how he sees it, okay? God says in that same verse, in verse 29, okay, he says, everybody that touches her is eventually going to be punished by me. You know what I'm saying? With the adulteress, it's your life. With the, the prostitute, who knows what it is. We can always choose to sin, but we cannot choose the consequences. We make light of this, guys, because we're men. We think it's no big deal. God's going to look the other way. God can never look the God other way. can okay? never look the other way, especially if you're married. And double, especially if you belong to the Lord and you call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a citizen of heaven. You think God's going to look the other way and his child ain't happening. Why are the warnings here? For you, for me. He knows we're men. He knows those desires we have. Just love this text because it's example after example because men were so hard-hearted okay verse 30 gives another example men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving yet whenever you hear yet listen up okay yet if he is caught he must pay sevenfold though it costs him all of his wealth in his house meaning the bible saying this watch this the thief only had sevenfold in his house okay that's all he had so he got caught stealing so it's going to cost him 
everything he owns, okay? It could be tenfold. It could be twentyfold, okay? Because some people uh, have enough. They have more than enough, but they still want more. That's a whole nother devotion. That's a whole nother sermon, okay? That's a dealing with the heart. That's dealing with greediness. You're, you're greedy. God's blessed you. You're, you're greedy. You don't need to be greedy. Just ask for more. That's what he told David. Nathan says, David, God would have given you anything that you asked for. All you had to do is ask. Be in right relationship. Serve me with all your heart. Okay? But verse 32, again, it's going to bring it home. God's bringing it home to you and I. Verse 32 says this, But a man who commits adultery lacks judgment. He's stupid is what he is. Whoever does so destroys himself. Did you hear what I just said? Whoever does these things destroys himself. Friends, I don't want to destroy myself. Do you want to destroy yourself? Because you're a loaf of bread you've been nibbling on poison, you've been watching pornography, you think it's okay and you go this place and this place and you start to lust and desire, you're even contemplating oh, shelling out a few dollars for a, a little piece of pleasure, or you, you see some wayward wife, the adulterous wife that this text is talking about, who's not satisfied with her relationship with her husband, okay? Next verse is 33, and what is 33? It is a curse from Almighty God. Friends, here's the thing, that curse will stick. Oftentimes people are cursing people and they're saying negative things about people. They're not sticking. Whom God blesses is blessed. Whom God curses is cursed. Okay? In the story of Balaam and Balak, okay, Balaam the prophet tries to place a curse on Israel, but it won't stick. Why? Because he says this. He prophesies and says this. I cannot curse that which God has blessed. Okay? Those people who belong to God. God's chosen inheritance. You! Me! The 33 men. It says this. Blows. And disgrace are his lot in life, and his shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses the husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation. He will refuse the bribe, however great it is. Meaning this, you will get caught. Listen, no, I'm not going to get caught. You will get caught. Why do I know that? God's word says it. Either you're right or God's right. Who do you think it is? Listen, listen. Either you're right or God's right. God says those people who hide in secrets, okay, are being secretive, who do not confess their sins, I will expose their sins, okay? If we make it right, if we confess that sin, God drowns that sin in the deepest ocean. He says, I separate it from the east is to the west. It's a done deal with God. He forgets about it. You come back a week later because of guilt and say, Lord, I'm sorry. He says, what are you talking about, okay? But if you try to hide your sin, you try to hide that adulterous affair, you try to hide something, God says, I will expose it, okay? And you will be shamed. You will suffer blows, okay? It's your lot in life. Did I tell you it was 95 degrees out here today or 97? It's just like the other day. It's so hot out here. Here's the thing. What do you want your lot in life to be? Do you want God's favor? Do you want God's blessing? Do you want Him to safeguard your life and give you all these different things that are in your heart that He's placed in your heart? Or do you want your lot in life to be a blow across your chin? Okay, meaning you are suffering dread. You are suffering punishment. Why? Because you couldn't control yourself as a man, okay? Friends, I don't want that, okay? It goes on to say, this man who does that, thinking I'm sneaky, I, I got a little on the down low, nobody knows, my wife doesn't know, or here's the thing, watch this very carefully, you're not married and you're just fooling around with another man's wife. Oh, shame on you, partner. God's bringing it. Listen, you're like, no, no. Yes, yes, I've seen it. Look, I'm look, telling look. you, God's word isn't going to return void. What he says is true and it applies to you and me on a daily basis. He says the man that finds out about this, and he will find out, because oftentimes what happens though, so, okay, that woman gets in an argument with her husband, okay, and it's a uh, just a drag out, knock down, and finally she says, I slept with Larry the neighbor! Larry's at home, it's been a year, it's been two years, or I slept with this person, or I did this, here's the thing, see, Satan eggs her on. Because Satan knows God's word, okay? So he's egging that woman on to spill her guts because the man, the husband, isn't treating the wife correctly with love. He's not cherishing her. He's not admonishing her. He's not being the role model in the house. And they're saying things that they're going to regret later, but eventually what's in, inside has to spill out because she hasn't repented before God and her husband, okay? And so it comes out verbally. The husband hears it. He walks out the door. Where does he go? Larry's house. Larry's sitting there on his chair in the backyard cooking dinner. Family's around. And here's the thing. Bob has a waylay with Larry. And here's the thing. If he escapes with his life, it's because of God's mercy and grace. Meaning because the Bible says that the husband who finds out is not going to take, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done it. Let me pay you. Let me do this. He's not going to take bribes. Meaning it's vengeance. Okay? You, you've struck at the core of his manliness. Okay? You've struck at the core of that which 
makes us a man. And he is going to pour out all of his strength, all of his might. If he has a Glock, he's going to use it. He's going to take an edge weapon and slice your throat because you couldn't control yourself. Because you looked at pornography. Because you lusted in your heart. Because you didn't think the rules matter to you where they do. But golly, Matt, are you kidding? I'm not kidding, okay? God's warnings. Guys, listen very carefully in the man cave. It, it, all of us seem to be susceptible to one thing more than another, okay? Some men, it is women. I mean, they just, they just can't stop thinking about them, looking at them, lusting after them, watching them on the internet. To another man, it might be power, meaning he will stomp, lie, cheat, do whatever it takes to feel he's powerful in this life. To another man, it's money, whatever it takes. Lie, steal, cheat, kill, he doesn't care. Money, 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 materialism. Friends, every one of us is built differently. Let me tell you a great story prominent pastor, pastor of about 12,000, three different services, okay, mega church, big, gigantic church on the internet, on the TV, on the radio, very, very, very well known, okay, one Sunday morning, he comes down. He normally has elders, deacons, and his uh, assistant pastors uh, taking those people and praying with those people. But he comes down, and there's a woman that comes to him, okay? She gives her life to the Lord. She confesses before God, I am a prostitute. I've been doing this my whole life. I have nowhere to live. You know, and she's crying out. She accepts Jesus Christ as Lord, prays the prayer, okay? And then that Monday morning, she's in his office because he wants to counsel her, okay? Watch this very carefully. She, and he says, well, where did you sleep last night? And she's kind of embarrassed. He says, where'd you sleep? And she slept in a park. He says, no. So he, listen, the pastor, having the right heart, watch this, but not using any sense, calls his wife and says, honey, there's a woman that got saved Sunday. She's in my office right now. My secretary's here. Okay, uh, she's coming out of a bad lifestyle of drugs and prostitution. I want to bring her home. We have two spare bedrooms, okay? Uh, the wife says, uh, reluctantly, okay. She comes home within two weeks. The prostitute comes up to the wife and says this, I'm in love with your husband. I'm going to marry him. The wife dismisses what she said, laughs it off, and she says, Honey, my, my, my husband is the pastor of the, you know, of blank, 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 whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to mention the church. Uh, he's known throughout the community. He, he, he's on this committee and this committee and he's a part of this and this and this. It's, uh, I know you're infatuated and we're, we, we're so glad to help you, okay? Watch this. Three months later, the pastor leaves the church, leaves his wife, leaves his four kids, leaves everything, goes and shacks up with the prostitute, divorces his wife, marries this woman who eventually gets tired of him and leaves him. What ends up happening, okay? He's shattered. He lost it all. Why? Because he lusted in his mind. He wanted that which God said no to. He desired to have which, what was forbidden from him. It was the forbidden fruit. We are back in the Garden of Eden. That thing is being placed before Eve. The subtlety of Satan coming along with that deception. If you will eat this, it will satisfy. Friends, listen very carefully to me. Nothing satisfies but God Almighty. It is Him and Him alone that satisfies. Sex is for a moment. Why do you want more sex? Because it doesn't last. Why do you want more food? Because it doesn't last. I'm hungry three hours after I eat. Why does the grave and hell and death always want more? Because it's not satisfied. Friends, if you have a lust problem, you'll never satisfy it. If one woman won't satisfy it, a thousand women won't satisfy it. We know that from the story of Solomon. This is all dealing with a heart condition, okay? And men that think they're strong, and here's the thing, you and I are in the man cave, okay? Our strength does not reside in us. It resides when we're on our knees and we're prostrate before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and saying, not my will be done, but thy will be done, okay? If you think you can go in alone, that you're an oak, that you're a pillar, that these things, I can handle it, you are about to fall. Our strength resides in Christ. When am I weak? Then am I strong. When I realize I'm weak in an area, I throw myself at the mercy and grace and the love of God saying, help me in this area. Safeguard my life. I don't want the consequences of my decisions, of my foolish decisions. That was the biggest bird that just flew by. Did you hear him? I don't know if you can hear me. He was flying by. Went, quick, 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 quick. It's like an alarm going off. And here's the thing. This is an alarm for some of you. Listen to chapter 5. I just want to read these words to you. For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, meaning she's hot. You want her. 
They, they, here's the thing, let's not sugarcoat it. You're looking at this beautiful woman, you'd like to have sex with her. Her lips drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil, meaning she's saying all the right things. But in the end, she is bitter as gall. Listen, that's what gall is. It's poison. Gall is poison, okay? But in the end, she is bitter as gall. Sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought of the way of her life, meaning she's easy. She's available. She'll throw herself at you. Take me. She gives no thought for the way of her life. Her paths are crooked, but she knows it not, meaning she's available. She's beautiful. She's talking, saying the right things. Hey, why don't we hook up? Why don't we go here? Why don't we do this? You know, one thing leads to another. No harm, no foul. There is a harm. There is a foul. There is a warning. God's warning goes on to say, Now then, my sons could say this. Listen to this. It could say instead, Now, now they're my sons. It could say, Hey, all men in the man cave, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to the path far, far from her. Do not go down near the door of her house, lest you give your best strength to others and your years to the cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth, because you lose everything, and your toil enriches another man's house. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. Meaning, here's the thing, she devours you. You're back to our original statement. You're a loaf of bread. Friends, it reads on. Listen to this. This is some good reading, okay? Listen. All at once, those who follow her are like an ox going to the slaughter. Oh my goodness. I tell you what, I love the Word of God because there's, God doesn't mince words. He's not tiptoeing around the tulips. He's not trying to sugarcoat it. He's not trying to make you feel good. He's putting the warning out there, allowing you to choose, okay? All at once, all who follow her are like ox going to the slaughter, like a deer stepping into the noose till the arrow pierces his liver, like a bird darting into the snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. Many are the victims. Man, in the man cave, do you want someone considering you a victim? Listen to this. Many are the victims she has brought down. She slain the mighty. Friends, that's what we are in Christ. We're the mighty. But this gal with the red lipstick, her short mini skirt, or her bathing suit has slain the mighty. She has slain men like you and I because we were stupid and not thinking and not obeying God's word. She has slain the mighty. Her house is... Is the, oh, oh, listen to this. Hey, let, let, see if you want to go to her house. Let's listen to her house. Her house is the highway to the grave leading down to the chambers of death and hell. Oh my goodness. That's what God is promising to the fool, to the jester, to the joke, to the, th the person who thinks I got to handle, to the person who can't keep his eyes off women. Okay, friends. Look at these warnings. Look at these warnings when you're at Walmart, when you're going around about, when you're considering in the office that new secretary, when you're going out to lunch with people that, here's the thing, you know it's unbalanced. Three women, you, what are you? Come on, give me a break. I know you're in the man cave, here's the thing. Be like Billy Graham. You know, early on in Billy Graham's ministry, he says this, I will never be with a woman alone ever in his whole ministry. That was his motto. Here's the thing, he always had his wife with him, okay, or he had two or three men with him. He would not let anyone accuse him of anything or be in a position where he would lust. He safeguarded his life. Yes, he loved his wife, but he realized that God has made women. They're all beautiful, okay? Not all women are like this, because I know there's women watching this. And women, listen very carefully. The woman I just described, there's just as many men out there that will do the same thing, okay? Sweet talk. You say the right things because you're not getting along with your husband. Yes, your husband is not perfect, okay? But watch this. Don't fall into that trap. Don't give your body to a stranger. What do we need to do? Safeguard our lives. Take the steps necessary right now when everything is going good. You're happily married, you have a wonderful family, or you're praying for a wife and you're not engaging the, in these things. And there is many of you who are on the straight and narrow. What I want you to do is stay on the straight and narrow, okay? It seems like this. Watch this. And I've seen this over and over and over again in my life. When God starts to bless, when God starts to prosper, when things get a lot more easier, meaning ease, comfort, and pleasure, meaning things are smoothing out, they're leveling out in your life, okay? Men, they get bored. Men, like you and me, they start to get bored because they have everything. They have a lot of the desires of their heart. They have a lot of the, one. the dream job and all the things that in early on in their years that they wanted and desired, God has blessed them with it, okay? It seems like when the ease, comfort, and pleasure come, when the favor of God comes, when the blessings of God come, men take their eyes off of God and they start looking elsewhere because what? They're greedy and they want more because as God was blessing them, they were slowly, but watch this very carefully, slowly, taking their eyes off of God 
and they were starting to look at the things, the material possessions, the position, the power, okay? Uh, you know, all these different things. They start, uh, just, uh, just slow, slowly. Did it happen overnight? No, oh, no, 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 no. Didn't happen overnight. You know, I was at the deli at Walmart and I wanted some roast beef and she didn't have one. So I always love when they open a brand new roast beef, okay? So she slices up the roast beef, chops it in half, and I got a huge brand new roast beef there. She says, how do you want to cut? I love my meat shaved. You know what I'm saying? A roast beef sandwich, mayonnaise, cheese, Swiss, okay? So she's saving it and she says, how much you want? I go, I want three pounds. Oh, she, she's just doing this, okay? Her arms were strong. I wouldn't want to fight her, okay? Uh, I mean, she was like she okay? Getting it on. She was going back and forth, okay? But watch this. I was looking and I was like, it doesn't look like anything's coming off. You know what I'm saying? And she goes, that's three pounds. I go, no, that's not three pounds. And she measured it, it was three pounds. What had happened? She was slicing it so thin, I couldn't even tell it was being sliced. Friends, that's how it is. When we're taking our eyes off of God and the things of God and we're starting to ignore God's principles and his laws and his mandates, okay? It's just so subtle. It's not, all, we're not tossing, we're not grabbing the towel, okay? Wiping her head and throwing the towel in. We're not doing that. There's very few people who are throwing the towel in at God as Christians, as believers, who are church members, okay? Who love the Lord, but it's subtle. Okay, so it's what is it? In life, Satan is attacking your perseverance. Satan is attacking you, trying to stop you, thwart you. He knows, here's the thing, yeah, you're in right relationship with God right now, but his, his, his strategy is to get you off course later, okay? Through what? Sometimes it's through materialism, through wealth, through position, through power, through all these other things. And he doesn't mind if he can only get this much of your attention off of God today. Because tomorrow it might be this much. And the next day it might be this much. In a year, it could be this much. And in two years, here's the thing. You might stop going to church. In a couple more years, you might not hang out with the Christian people because you just don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? You're, doing, you're so successful and they're not, okay? Before long, you're not satisfied with life because why? Your relationship with God isn't where it needs to be. So you start looking externally. Well, you have all the money you need. You have the house. You have a beautiful wife. You have kids. You have a, a, an additional house on the lake. You have all the things that this world can offer. And those things are nice in the right position, okay, as you're a steward of them. But you want more. So what do men sometimes do? Alcohol, drugs, sex outside of marriage. They join themselves unto something. Because what? We need man's approval. All the stuff that God just blessed us with, it's not enough. It would have been enough if we had kept our eyes on God. That's why God, Paul the Apostle says, I know how to live abased, and I know how to live abound. See, Paul the whole time was looking to God as his source. So whether he had little, he was satisfied. Whether he had a lot, he was satisfied. There was no, there was no problem there. There's always a problem when we take our eyes and our focus off of God and stop following God's ways. Why? Because nothing satisfies. A little, we're disgusted with. We're really upset about the situation, the season that we're in. A lot isn't enough. Okay, why is it? Because we're not satisfied on the innermost part of us, our core being. Our relationship with God isn't where it needs to be. And so what do we do? We start looking after foolishness and we start going after follow. We start lusting. We want all these different things that God has said no to, but we think it's okay because look at my life. I'm blessed. I mean, look at what, look at who I am. Look how I'm respected. Look, I'm, a, I'm an elder in the church. I'm this, this, this. I'm the president of a company. I own the company. I'm this, I'm this. It's always I, I, I. You know when I hear that? It reminds me of who? Say Satan, 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 I will ascend. I will do this. I will be like the Most High. I will get the worship of man. And all that is false right before he got kicked out of heaven. And friends, here's the thing. God's warnings are there for you and I. The Bible says, what, if, what is the gain of man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? It's not how you start. It's how you finish. That's what the Word of God is. Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave.